And if you have a girlfriend who is single, because I'm married, mm -hmm. I yeah. am not, give her a hug. Give her a hug. No, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Thank you for uh, but you're hugging me. I didn't hug you. Oh, I love you so much. I love you too. Ever wondered what a conversation between me and my bestie sounds like? At least an informal conversation? Today, I'm joined by my best friend, Janet Zavala. We're diving into a heartfelt discussion about the power of support systems in midlife, right from the beautiful, sunny Southern California. Here's a little secret. Janet shared meditation is her favorite way to center herself, but you have to leave no stone unturned to figure out how to live your best life. Stick around as we explore how these small, daily steps lead to monumental changes. And trust me, by the end of our chat, you'll be rethinking how you approach your own journey. So what's it like to be a life coach? I love talking to people and helping them break through what they're going through, break it down, try to resolve it, and then set goals to achieve what they want to achieve. Tell me something. Mm. How did you reached the point to where you were able to overcome whatever obstacles were standing in your way and achieve those goals to where now you're able to help people. I spent a lot of time researching and trying to figure out what works for me because you can look out there and there are a million different things that you can do to try and heal and grow and learn. And you've got to find the thing that works for you. So in just trying different things, trying different modalities, meditation is always my favorite just to kind of center yourself, to get you into the space where you can start healing. But I think that you have to try everything. You have to leave no stone unturned to try to figure out how to live your best life because we are meant to live our best lives. And so you just need to keep on trying and then being consistent about it. Keep on going back to it. Small steps every day done consistently, will get you to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. What about, um, can I ask you a question? Sure. Tell me why you started this podcast. Why did I start this podcast? I started this podcast because can, being a woman in midlife can be a very lonely place to be. Yeah. And sometimes you, know, you might have your family, you might have you might be rich with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though you're rich with these people, there's still that feeling inside of loneliness. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much going on personally, professionally. So many things biologically that are mm -hmm. changing. And it's hard to explain or express yourself because... Mm -hmm. Being a woman, people might say, oh, she's such a whiner. And, and you feel like you're misunderstood. And so just being able to have somebody out there that understands you, mm -hmm. at yeah. least in my opinion, yeah. it's just worth so much. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more with everything you said. I think that there, there is a strong desire for more meaning and more purpose in your life. And to do different things and to find that fulfillment. But I want people to understand it's not that you didn't enjoy what you did in the first part of your life. It's not like you didn't find fulfillment and having a family or raising kids. But now you're like, okay, what else is there? I have so much to offer. I think that when we deplete ourselves, giving to everybody else, which again is perfectly wonderful and fulfilling. But then there comes a time when you're like, okay, what about me? What do I like? Because you're focusing on everybody else's passions, everybody else's loves and everybody else's lives and fixing things and doing the things. But then you find like, okay, well, what about me? And you're like, I want to do something for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of women in midlife, what we find is that 
saying, I want to do something from me because we have given so much of ourselves can sort of seem that you're being a little selfish. And it's not that you're being selfish. You're you're just for the first time Mm -hmm. in some of us in 50 years, we're saying it's my turn. Yeah. 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 And it's not selfish. It's mental. You're refreshing yourself. That's right. You're polishing yourself up. That's right. And the amazing thing about going through that right now, Janet, Mm -hmm. is that we're so much stronger. We're so much more wiser. Yeah. And there's so much endless possibilities of what we can accomplish mm-hmm. in this particular stage of our life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, you and I do what we do. We are providing women with the tools and the knowledge to move to that next level. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. But let's talk about like having that tribe because I think that you know, we we met through a friend and it's just been kind of love at first sight. You know, <laughs> we've like been like bonded ever since. And, you know, our daily text, you know, and, and for a while we both had a bunch of things going on and we fell off and it's like, I miss my bestie. I miss her. <laughs> you know, it's that, it's that, that, you know, connection and that understanding. So talk about like, what the importance is of having your tribe, frightening your tribe, and then having it to support you through this time. Janet, I will be very honest with you. Having that person, either mm-hmm. one person or mm-hmm. three people, you know, whatever that community fits for your need. Like, you know, for me, you know, right now where I'm at in my life, in you know, way. that one-on-one type yeah. of thing, well, so rich. It's so empowering to know that there is somebody out there on, you know, maybe on the other side of the earth or the other side of the world. You know, I'm very fortunate that my bestie is, what is on it? the other side I'm of California? California. Side of, but but, but that's Southern California, I'm in Northern California. Yeah. It's just, you know, one hour flight away. But it's just, it makes, it gives, you give me power. When I feel down and, you know, like the world has just given me a real good beating. Mm-hmm. Sending you that text just lifts me up and lets yeah. me know that, hey, it's okay. You can do it. You can do it. Girl power, you got this. Yeah. yeah. And got this or take a break or you did it. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Or even like the small little tiny wins, you know, when mm-hmm. someone sends me a message either on TikTok or on Instagram or, yeah. or YouTube and says, hey, did you hear this? Yeah. You know, I, I might send you a message and say, hey, Janet, I got a heart. Hey, Janet. Yeah. I got mm-hmm. somebody sent me a message and here's my children are saying, yeah, you let him go. Yeah. 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 You know, it might be small, but it's that cheerleader that I needed to That's just right. say, hey, keep going. That's right. Or when I'm yeah. down in the dirt and just saying, oh, man, life is giving me a real good beating. Yeah. You know, it's just like you might be, you know, in Southern California and I'm in Northern California, but I just feel like you're just lifting me right up. Say, hey, girl, it's OK. It's part of life. It's part of growing. You yeah. went through this, you know, in your younger years. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're going to go through it again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's empowering. I, I, you know, I strongly recommend that any woman out there needs to find that tribe, that yeah. person, that one, or, or you know, some of us need several people. Right. right. Absolutely. And how do we find those people? How do we find those people? You know how you find those people, Janet? Hey. You got to be vulnerable. Yeah. You got to hey. open up. You got to open up, even though, you know, maybe a lot of us are introverts. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I know I'm, I'm an extrovert. You're an introvert. Yeah. But it takes a lot of vulnerability to reach out to that person and mm-hmm. say, hey, how are you doing? Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. even when you don't really want to ask that person how they're doing because yeah. you feel miserable and you want to just hide under, the, hide, you know, hide under the covers and just not cry. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like sometimes I don't reach out to people because I'm like, you know, I don't want to bother them bother them. I don't want to intrude. I don't want to like, you know, take anything away from them. But I find that when I do reach out, like 
it's needed and I need it. And we need that exchange of energy. Yeah. And, you know, I had a woman reach out to me on TikTok mm-hmm. when I did the episode for I dedicated it to my bestie. Mm-hmm. And she just said that she talked about working from home and she talked about how difficult, you know, how do you make friends, especially where she's no longer in the office. She's yeah. working from home. Yeah. And so she's in her home. How do you make friends? And I gave her an answer and she came back and said, yes, but how do you make friends? And mm-hmm. so I reached out to her and I just said, I, I said, you know, you need to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. You need to connect with people. You need to talk, you know, join different Facebook groups or mm-hmm. Instagrams or just mm-hmm. different groups out there and find that person then yeah. has that common, you know, you, you have an interest or something mm-hmm. with yeah. you. Say hi. Ask a coworker. Even though you're working virtually, mm-hmm. ask a coworker that lives in the same town as you. Ask them out for coffee. Right. Right. You know, and what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to say no. Yeah. Yeah. You know, think they're going to remember. Hey, you know, Shannon asked me out for coffee. I should take her up on. Yeah. And you never know that person who you ask like has been wanting that connection as well. Has been wanting to have somebody to talk to. So. You know, you never know whose life you can touch when you do that. I think also like following your passions and your curiosity. So if you enjoy photography, go do a meetup group where you go out and take pictures and you meet people with common interest or take a class or explore things that you're interested in and you're curious about because that's where your people will be. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of times a lot of us are kind of reluctant to do this but mm-hmm. if for example if i like your box i'd say hey janet and how long last you are yeah yeah even things as simple as that creates mm-hmm. conversation and what can you expect from conversations mm-hmm. friendships to that's blossom right. that's right maybe and, not friendships right away that's right and and practice because like you said not every compliment is going to turn into a friendship but if you have a hard time doing it practice in the grocery store, you know, smile at somebody. Oh, you know, don't be creepy about it. But <laughs> don't be creepy. But, you know, just get into the practice of talking because I, I am really an introvert and I don't like small talk and I had a hard time. And, you know, it's a thing with me. But when I have those connections, like they go deep, they go deep. So, you know, even if you're an introvert, you can do it. You can build those relationships. Yeah. And I think it's, I think that in today's world, we kind of become those type of people that rely on scrolling on Mm -hmm. social media and fantasizing Mm -hmm. what you see on social media. Oh, I wish I had that. Or I wish I had that kind Mm -hmm. of life and stuff. And so I think that we become more technical savvy. And I'm, Mm -hmm. I hate saying this because I'm a big tech geek and you are. I come down with, but I'm real my tech support. <laughs> but the, you still need to have that human connection. Absolutely. You have to have it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, start getting into the practice of complimenting people. Yeah, that's so good. Smiling. Yeah. Even you, yeah. you don't yeah. want to truly smile. Mm-hmm. There's so much power that comes into your physical being when you smile. Yeah. When you smile at someone else, mm-hmm. it's infectious. Absolutely. It's an exchange of energy. And, you know, in this world that we're living in, like, we need more of that positive exchange of energy right we now. Do. And, you know, and sometimes, like, if I did say, Janet, love your blouse, I may not know what's going on in your life. Mm-hmm. And maybe you're feeling down, but that's a compliment. Right. And all of a sudden, you have this uplifting feeling mm-hmm. inside you. Mm-hmm. And people will remember that. They'll say, hey, you know what? I, you know, Janet, I saw, I, I think that's her name, Janet. I saw her at the grocery store or I saw her at such and such place. She made me feel so good. Mm-hmm. They may not remember what you did that made mm-hmm. them feel good, but they know that you made them. That's right. And so I think that we need to practice that um, mm-hmm. a little bit more. I love that. And I think that if we did that, we could build greater friendships where they didn't, where they don't exist. That's right. If you're a woman in midlife, I think like, we should have a challenge where, you know, go out and this week and smile and say hi to at least three people. 
build that connection. Start practicing. Or if you can't do that, mm -hmm. start with smiling. Just smile. And then once you're a little more comfortable with the smiling part, mm -hmm. you're saying good morning, mm -hmm. good afternoon. Yeah. Or ask people, how are you doing today? That's right. But generally, yeah. really, 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 and truly, you right. really want to know, how are you doing today? Well, yeah. Yeah. And if you have a girlfriend who is single, because I'm married, mm -hmm. I yeah. am not, give her a hug. Give her a hug. Yes. Because I will tell you, I was single for 21 years before I got married. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it can be a lonely place. And we, as single women, don't get very much hugs. And we yeah. need that connection. That's the right. Sweet, mm -hmm. innocent connection of the play. Value your friendship. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. And it's a real hug. That's right. Just a hug. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think that's so important. That human connection and that human touch, you know, based on your, your needs and your desires and your wants and in your personality, but yeah, I think it's so important. Yeah. yeah. All right. I love getting to talk to you. I love your little trips down here and just, you know, um, you down here in Southern California and, and me, you know, just driving a little, a little ways to come have a meal, connect, can't jump, up, make a video. <laughs> Even though it's in the hotel room while my husband's out with the girls, um, doing a little bit of shopping. And my makeup looks bad, but you know what? I that's the other thing. It's like we are so hard on ourselves with our looks, and because I'm sitting here thinking and I'm having a wonderful conversation, but how am I looking? Am I, you know, we we just need to be okay and have that self love, and you know, we're not going to be perfect. We're not going to be, you know, like we were at twenty, right? And, and that's okay. We shouldn't be. That's not how life works, right? But. You know, we have to be okay with us. We have to be more authentic. Mm -hmm. I think if we, as um, one of my prior guests, uh, Courtney McDermott said, mm. take off that mask. Take, take off that mask and just be authentic. Mm -hmm. I think if we were more authentic and had a little more compassion and reached out, smile, ask people generally how they're doing and hug people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And be open to those relationships that are unexpected like ours, right? I mean, the, there's no reason in the world that our common, you know, friend and introduced us and I came on your show a couple times, twice, you know, it, it could have just ended there and I was a guest on your show and that's it. But we fostered that relationship. We kept it going. We kept on interacting. And so, you know, as I have said in this week's episode, and in one of my prior episodes, need to nurture those relationships. Mm -hmm. Nurturing is key. Yeah. Don't permit a crack. Thank you for uh, thank you're you. hugging me. I didn't hug you. Oh, I love you so much. I love you too. All right. All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> wow, what a journey we had today. Janet has truly opened our eyes to the endless possibilities that can come from exploring every avenue to live your best life. Remember her words about meditation and trying everything. It's about those small, consistent steps that lead to big, impactful changes. If you want to dive deeper into today's conversation or revisit any part of our discussion, you can find the full transcript at createthebestme.com forward slash EP077. Thank you everyone for joining us for a special episode of Create the Best Me. Be sure to come back next week when we'll be joined by your favorite midlife coach and the host of Midlife Out Loud podcast, Junie Moon. We'll explore transformative journeys towards self-love and creating fulfilling relationships. Until then, keep dreaming big. Take care of yourself. And remember, you are beautiful, strong, and capable of creating the best version of yourself. Thank you for watching. Catch you next week. Bye for now.